Question 3. This question is about nitrogen and phosphorus uh, elements. A. Nitrogen is found in inorganic compounds such as nitrogen oxide, nitrates and nitric acid. Part 1. Identify one natural and one man-made occurrence of nitrogen oxide. Okay, for the natural, occurrence is uh, lightning because during this uh, process, uh, it produces a large amount of energy which can break the NN triple bond. So therefore, it can form the oxide. For the man-made, uh, we just need to use the combustion engine. Because in the combustion engine, so it's a high pressure and uh, high temperatures condition. Also, it can break the NN triple bonds. Part 2. Write the equations to describe the role of NO2 in the direct formation of acid rain. Direct formation means uh, we use NO2 to make the acid, uh, not the uh, formations of the SO3, eventually form the sulfuric acid. So uh, we just need to use the NO2 with the oxygen and the water, so it can form this nitric acid. So you just need to remember this equation, or you can uh, use this equation. Uh, but normally, we will, we will uh, give this. Uh, nitrogen dioxide with oxygen and water will produce one compound, okay, which is the nitric acid. Okay, so you just balance it accordingly. So now we have this uh, peroxy acetyl nitrate, uh, or PAN. So it's a component of the photochemical smart. Describe how this uh, PAN forms from the nitrate nitrogen dioxide okay, it's very easy uh, it just need to combine with the unburned hydrocarbon in the car engine so when they are the unburned hydrocarbons and the NO2 uh, together with the UV or sunlight it can form these chemicals so this is how the PAN form right? part 4 Nitric acid reacts with the basic oxide to form nitrates. Write an equation for the reactions of nitric acid with calcium oxide. Basically, this is just a neutralization, uh, which is very easy. It's from salt and water. So the salt that produce, of course, is calcium nitrate. You should know the formulas. And uh, of course, water. Huh? So just put the nitric acid with the calcium oxide, CaO, then it will form this calcium nitrate, the salt, and water. And you just balance it. Put the two here. Um, part 5. Describe what is seen when solid calcium nitrate is heated strongly. Uh, this one is very easy. Uh, when the group 2 nitrate decomposes, it will form three compounds. The group 2 oxide, NO2, and O2. What you can see, of course, oxygens are cannot be seen, colorless. Calcium oxide is a white solid, uh, very similar to the this uh, calcium nitrate. What you can see is the brown gas here, the NO2. So, the brown fumes release. Uh, the NO2 is the brown fumes. When this calcium nitrate get heated, uh, it will form this NO2, right? The brown, fume, the brown fumes. Okay, part B, a common test for the nitrate is the reactions with uh, sodium hydroxide and aluminum. Equation 1 shows the reaction. Uh, this is the uh, reactions uh, when you try to do the practical. When you test there is a presence of nitrate or nitrate. In this uh, question is nitrate. So aluminum reacts with hydroxide and nitrate now form ammonia. So in the lab, we will use the uh, damp red litmus paper uh, to test the presence of N, uh, the NH3, the ammonia. So it will turn the red litmus blue. And uh, now, uh, the question is part one. Deduce the oxidation states of nitrogen in the NO3 negative, this nitrate ion. Uh, so O3, so it's negative two times three, so it's negative six. Overall charge is negative. So the oxidation states for nitrogen must be positive 5. 
according to the latest syllabus, the oxidation state it should be in Roman number. So you just put this. Part two, identify the species that oxidize in equation one. Okay, let's check. Uh, it's quite straightforward. The aluminium, so initially is zero. After reactions, as you can see here, okay, it's from this uh, compound, and the aluminium is uh, positive three. Hydroxide is uh, four. Hydroxide is negative four. Overall charge is negative, so aluminium is positive three. Uh, so we know that the species that is oxidized because it's from zero to positive three. Uh, the oxidation number so we know that the aluminium is being oxidized part 3 ammonia is a basic gas describe how ammonia is able to act as a base uh, a base is always a proton acceptor uh, so ammonia will use its lone pair to form a dative bond with the H plus the hydrogen ion to form ammonium uh, so uh, this is the the base 60 uh, of this uh, ammonia gas. Okay, you just describe like this, uh, describe how this one able to add as a base because ammonia is uh, this uh, proton acceptor. Uh, that's all. Part four, suggest the shape of the this uh, anion. Okay, so this one is uh, aluminium with four hydroxide. Uh, it look like this. This is a structure. So aluminium from four dative bond with the hydroxide and is a tetrahedral geometry. Okay, part C. Uh, figure 3.1 uh, show a sketch of some of the ionization energy of phosphorus. Okay, so first, phosphorus you need to know is group 15, 5 valence electron. Now, uh, later we come back to this, uh, this uh, diagram, this figure 3.1. Uh, part 1. Construct an equation to represent the third ionization energy of uh, phosphorus. Uh, third ionization energy, so the starting species must be the phosphorus with two positive gases ion. So, the phosphorus two positive gases ion will release one electron and form the phosphorus three positive gases ion. Okay, so this is the equations that you must gift and complete the graph in the figure 3.1 to show the third to sixth ionization energy of phosphorus. Okay, so I use a circle here, right? In the exam, of course, you can put the dot. Uh, so this one you need to fill it up uh, because we know that phosphorus is group 15. So it's having five valence electron means the first five ionization energy it must steadily increase no big jump so you just put uh, after the second so you just put a slightly higher ie the fourth ie slightly higher the fifth ie also slightly higher when it's from fifth to six ie so there must be a big jump because the six electron is from the inner shell closer to the nucleus that's why it needs more IE. So you just need to put uh, uh, higher uh, than the much higher than the this uh, the ionization the fifth ionization energy, right? So which is closer to this uh, seventh ionization energy, right? So you just need to show a big jump, right, between the the fifth and the sixth here, right? So that's all. Um, now part D. Completes the table 3.1 to show the properties of nitrogen and the phosphorus in their standard state. Okay, so first, uh, this is the one that you need to fill up. Uh, electrical conductivity for nitrogen, of course, is poor electrical conductivity. So it's a non-metal. It cannot carry the charge or the electrons. And uh, for phosphorus, also poor electrical conductivity. Okay, type of bonding, uh, you must put the strongest one uh, because in the nitrogen molecule so they are three covalent bonds so one sigma two pi bonds so you must put covalent bond for the phosphorus also you need to put the covalent bond between the phosphorus atom 
right so both covalents okay do not put the uh, this uh, the intermolecular force okay now a uh, type of structure of course nitrogen is a simple molecular structure phosphorus also simple it will not form networks uh, each of the phosphorus molecule is like this so it's four phosphorus atom in one molecules between the phosphorus molecules they're having the id id forces uh, so this is the intermolecular force between the uh, these phosphorus molecules uh, nitrogen also same between the nitrogen molecule they're having the id id forces as well right but again in this the previous part you must put covalent small and of course the type of structure for phosphorus it must be simple huh? it's not giant okay part e a form of solid nitrogen has a lady structure similar to the uh, solid iodine uh, iodine is a simple molecular huh? you should know this identify the type of lady structure of solid nitrogen uh, solid nitrogen must be simple because uh, mo nitrogen molecule is just n2 so when it's formed solid it must be a simple molecular structure there is no uh, covalence networks there right so you just put simple molecular part f at very high temperature phosphorus can form p2 molecules p2 contains a triple bonds uh, like the nitrogen so means uh, you need to just imagine the p2 molecules like nitrogen molecules part one describe the formations of the these uh, p2 molecules uh, the bond in terms of uh, orbital overlap so means you need to uh, describe uh, or explain uh, use the this orbital overlap so which orbitals that overlap okay first you must uh, mention how many sigma bond and how many pi bonds there so because there are three bondings there uh, whenever there are multiple bonds uh, it must be one sigma bond and the remaining is pi bond so in this triple bond we know that there is a one sigma bond and two pi bond okay, so this is the first statement and uh, okay i better show you okay this uh okay this orbital uh that involved uh, for the overlapping so this is just for the the one phosphorus the hybrid orbitals that involved and the p orbitals that involved okay when the phosphorus atom now form triple bond so the phosphorus need to undergo a hybridization we call sp hybridization okay something like this uh, so there will be one electron in the sp hybridized orbitals so what is sp hybridized means uh, one s orbital and one p orbitals mix up and form these hybrid orbitals and in these hybrid orbitals okay, there is one lone pair and one unpaired electron and this unpaired electrons is used is going to use for the sigma bonds formation something like this the sp orbitals is look like this okay this is one sp orbitals this is another sp orbitals so means this is one phosphorus atom and this is another phosphorus atom and these two hybrid orbitals is undergo hits on overlap so it's direct overlap and form the sigma bond so this is a sigma bond produced from the this hit on overlap how to form the two pi bond the two pi bond is from here uh, they are un two unhybridized p orbitals and these two p uh, these two p orbitals will undergo sideways overlaps okay, this is one p orbitals from the one phosphorus atom and this is another p orbitals from uh, from the another phosphorus atom so they undergo sideways overlap from one pi bond so there will be an uh, two uh, overlapping uh, two sideways overlap to form two pi bond okay, because they are two p orbitals here and 
it can undergo two overlappings to form the two sigma bond, uh, two, two pi bond. Sorry. Okay. Therefore, this is the explanation. Uh, the one sigma bond is formed from the head on overlap of sp orbital. Uh, this is a very specific answer. Uh, sp orbitals are the hybrid orbitals. And the two pi bonds are formed from the sideway overlaps of the p orbitals here. Uh, these two p orbitals to form the two pi bond. Okay, part two. The bond energy of the, these uh, uh, p2 molecules uh, is uh, 485 kilojoule per mole. The bond energies of the normal nitrogen uh, molecule is uh, 944 kilojoule per mole. Compare the reactivity of P2 and N2. Explain your answer. First, uh, reactivity means um, it's able to react with other elements. So we know that phosphorus is lower in the group, group 15. So the size of phosphorus is actually larger. And already uh, told you the bond energy now is smaller, means uh, the energies that needed to break this bond is uh, lesser, means it's easier for the phosphorus to undergo bond break and it reacts with others. That's why we have this answer. So the phosphorus molecule is much weaker, uh, means the, this uh, triple bond is much weaker from these uh, uh, bond energies given, you should know why. Uh, this uh, triple bond is much weaker, therefore the phosphorus molecule is more reactive, easier to react with others because it's easy to break this bonding. Okay, that's all. Thank you.